have a question for you. Why would you buy the new Talking Heads Stop Making Sense reissue slash remaster on vinyl when you can stream it in high res pretty much for free? In fact, why buy any vinyl nowadays in 2023 when most releases can be streamed effectively for free in a bare minimum of CD quality and in around 10% of cases, maybe a bit less than that actually, in high res audio? This episode is brought to you by NAD, makers of the C3050 streaming amplifier with DRAC room correction. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Now, I'm not going to go into the well-worn reasons as to why people buy vinyl in this video, those being the joy of owning a large physical format, the joy of cultivating a, a collection over months or years. Now, instead today, I want to take a look at another side of vinyl, another reason why people choose the big black discs or colored discs or transparent discs in some cases over and above high-res audio. And to do that, we need to look at how vinyl was made prior to 1990, roughly. I'm using 1990 as a rough cutoff and then how it is made nowadays. Because many people buy records pressed prior to roughly 1990 because they were made differently to how they are made now, in the main. I'm talking in the main here. Yes, there are outliers, but generally in the main, in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, and some of the 90s, records were mastered in the analog domain. A master tape was created, and then a lacquer was cut by feeding the analog output of the master tape being played back on the big reel-to-reel -reel machine into the lathe that cut the lacquer, and then that lacquer went off to the pressing plant, and the pressing plant used that to create many thousands of copies. So it was an all analog process. But nowadays, many mastering studios, in fact, probably most of them, and in most cases, so for most albums that they're mastering, they are working in the digital domain. So what that means is that if they're going to remaster an album, they'll take the master tape and they'll transfer it first to a digital file using an analog to digital converter, and then they'll remaster it in the, in the digital domain, and then they'll feed the analog output of that file fed through a DAC into the lathe that then cuts the lacquer that then goes off to the pressing plant. And very often the record label's marketing department will obfuscate that digital step by saying remastered from the analog tapes. Now that is true, the analog tapes were used, but what that little label, that hype sticker does on the front of the record, what that obfuscates is the interstitial digital step. So it's not an all analog process. So we ask again, why bother buying the vinyl when we can stream effectively for free the high res digital file that was used to cut that vinyl? Because most vinyl nowadays is cut from a high res digital file because most mastering and remastering is done in the digital domain. Now the short answer to this is that the file that is used to cut the vinyl is very often a different file that is sent off to streaming services for them to stream out directly into your house. So in my last video about Talking Heads to Stop Making Sense, we looked at three digital versions of the album that have come out down the years. We looked at the original CD, which has nine songs and has a dynamic range of 14. And that was measured using a piece of software called DR Offline Mark II, and that is made by Mart. And then we applied that same software to the 1999 remix and remaster, which contains 16 songs, so pretty much the original movie version, and that came back with a dynamic range, an average dynamic range of 11. And then we looked at the high-res edition of the brand new 2023 remaster of Stop Making Sense, which contains 18 songs, so the full movie as seen on Laserdisc and VHS, and its dynamic range came back with an average of nine. So you can see that as we've stepped through the years, the dynamic range has gone down. And I made that video to highlight the fact that the dynamic range of a recording will have more of an impact on what we hear than the delivery format. So the original Stop Making Sense CD in MP3 format will probably sound better to most people than say the 1999 remaster played back as a flack. And in my experience, this is a common story 
where subsequent remasters of an album tend to be louder than the original master, and they're generally louder because the record company wants it that way. They are instructing the mastering engineer to make it a bit louder, to make it pop a little bit more, to make it more exciting for you and me to listen to. So no, we shouldn't necessarily blame the mastering engineers who are creating these louder remasters or more dynamically compressed remasters because very often it's the label demanding as much. The mastering engineers know that an excessive use of dynamic range compression will kind of ruin the sound of an album, but they are really doing what they are paid to do. Now, fortunately for the sound quality minded among us, the mastering process used to cut a vinyl master is different to a digital master, or usually is, in that the bass is often summed to mono below about 150 hertz, and then frequencies above 15 kilohertz are rolled off. And in extreme circumstances, when a punchier cut is destined to close out a side, the track listing of the album will have to be rejigged. And if you dig into the history of Peter Gabriel's So, you'll find a good example of what I'm talking about there. And if the digital master is dynamically compressed or if it's ultra loud, then very often, if we wanna put that on vinyl, we either have to give it more surface area, which isn't always possible if you're trying to put so many tracks on per side, or the dynamic range compression has to be dialed back a little bit. Now, if we remind ourselves that the high-res version of the new 2023 Master of Stop Making Sense has an average dynamic range of nine, we'll know also that resequencing the track list was a no-go for this album. So it's possible that what the mastering engineer did for making the, the vinyl master for this album is that they dialed back the dynamic range compression. And we're gonna find out if they did that in a moment. So thanks to several nudges from several commenters on the last video about this Stop Making Sense album, I decided it was high time that I tested out the HD converter that I bought just after Munich this year. It's called the Cosmos ADC. It is made by a company called E1DA, little known company from China, I believe. And I connected that to a stellar phono, phono stage from PS Audio. So I went balanced out of that phono stage, balanced into the ADC, then I fed the ADC into my MacBook here. And the turntable I used was a Torrens TD1500, fitted with a moving coil Torrens Taz 1500 cartridge. And I recorded the ADC's output in my MacBook using a bit of software called Reaper. I also used Reaper to cut the four sides of vinyl into 18 distinct tracks. So I had 18 FLAC files at the end of it in 1644.1. And then I ran those 18 FLAC files through DR Offline Mark II to measure their average dynamic range. And the result surprised me, an average dynamic range of 13. Remember, the high res digital streamable file or downloadable file had a DR of nine. This vinyl has a DR of 13. Now, if some of you are thinking right now, well, hang on a minute, John, this isn't just an analysis of the Stop Making Sense vinyl that you bought, but it's also factoring in your turntable, your cartridge and your phono preamp. I can understand that concern. In fact, I've seen a comment on a forum made by the co-founder of Mart who codes that DR offline Mark II software, basically saying that all vinyl rip information is just a nonsense because yes, it captures the vinyl, but also the playback chain as well. And you can't separate the vinyl's dynamic range from the playback chain's dynamic range. I think that's what he's trying to say. I preempted this by getting another vinyl rip of this new 2023 edition of Stop Making Sense from the internet. I'm not gonna tell you where I got it, but I ran that through DR Offline Mark II, and that also gave me a dynamic range average score of 13. So that was done with completely different hardware, still got DR13. But of course we should also listen to the vinyl rip. So I sent that through my DAC and then I sent the, the download that I have on my Rune server through my DAC. And I would say that the vinyl rip has, I guess, a softer transient response and isn't quite as clean with layer separation as the digital file, the digital download. But the vinyl rip to me just feels just a little bit looser. 
Now, maybe that's evidence of less dynamic range compression. I don't know. But that vinyl rip didn't sound as nervy or as uptight or as rigid as the digital download. And if I was asked to choose which one of these versions of Stop Making Sense I would pick as my forever set of files, so the vinyl rip or the digital download, I would choose the vinyl rip. So whilst the vinyl rip doesn't best the digital download in all audible aspects, I think this is a great example of why many people choose to buy vinyl instead of digital, essentially because dynamic range compression is less abundant, so therefore the master that is used to cut the vinyl can sound both subjectively better and according to DR Offline Mark II, which I'm not sure is 100% reliable in this case, but we'll assume it is, also shows that it is objectively better. Now what I'm talking about in this video and in the previous video is nothing new. Dynamic range scoring has been around for a long time, as long as dynamic range compression, I guess. But what I'm trying to show here is that the, the dynamic range of a recording, I guess I'm saying this, I'm sounding like a broken record if you excuse the pun, it has more of an impact on what we hear than the delivery format. And if the master used to make that format is a different master and is less dynamically compressed, then I can definitely see why many people would choose that master, even if it is delivered on what many people consider to be yesterday's format or a hipster format or a compromised format. Because the dynamic range compression matters more than the format. Anyway, I might be wrong about some of this. I guess I'm gonna find out soon because I'm gonna be interviewing PB Thal. If you know who PB Thal or PB Tal, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but if you know who that is, he's a bit of a kind of a hero of the, the vinyl ripping scene or the underground vinyl ripping scene. I'm gonna be talking to him very soon on the Darko Audio podcast. So I'll get to find out all of the ways that I went wrong in this video when I speak to him, if I have gone wrong. But hopefully, if I have erred in this video, you will let me know in a nice, polite way in the comment section below. Or if you really just kind of dig this video, then maybe you'll consider giving it a like down below. If you like my attitude towards the sound of music, not being just about the hardware that we use, but also the source material, then if you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. because many people nowadays, they are And to do that, we need to look at how vinyl used to be made and how then And to do that, we need to look at how vinyl was But nowadays, many mastering studios, in fact, I would say most of them, for most Now the short answer to this is that the file that is used Now the short answer to this now, in my last video about Talking Heads is Stop Making Sense, we looked at three different digital versions and the Now, in my last video about Talking Heads is Stop Making Sense, we looked at three different And in that video, I made that video basically on what we hear from our head fight or And I made that video And I made that video to essentially So and I made that video to underscore, no. And in my experience, the remaster sound louder to make it pop more, to sound it more, for it to. And in my experience, this is a common story where record labels will, no. And if we want to put a dynamic to the, the streamable file that I would punch in from Rune on my phone, well, I'm obviously using a and not quite as soft or as squishy in the top end. So essentially, so essentially the vinyl rip, I think the, the vinyl rip sounds, yeah, a bit, what am I saying here? But of course we should also listen to the results of these, but we should also, so whilst the, the vinyl rip doesn't best the, so whilst, so whilst, mm.